So this is the last video in chapter four. So far in the chapter, we've learned some general properties of aqueous solutions, strong weak and non-electrolytes, three different types of reactions. In the last video cast, you learned about calculating concentration or something called molarity. This last section, we bring back some pieces from chapter three, and this is solution stoichiometry. Solution stoichiometry is very similar to the stoichiometry you learned back in chapter three, where there are four and a half steps. Step number one in the solution stoichiometry problem is to write the balanced chemical equation. Step number two is to convert to moles, except now you know another way to convert to moles. You know the molarity triangle. And so many times they'll give you a volume and a concentration and they'll ask you to find moles. They could also ask you to use your periodic table because they might give you grams, or at the end, they might want the grams as well. Step two and a half only occurs if there's more than one reactant, and this is to divide by the coefficient if there are more than two reactants to determine which species is the limiter. Step number three is to use the mole to mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. And then step number four is to convert to the asked for units. And many times they'll ask you to find either the volume of a solution or the molarity of a solution and give you some information to use the molarity triangle. But they could still ask you to find grams or particles or molecules or atoms as well from the periodic table. So it just adds one more piece into the four steps that you learned from chapter three. So be careful that uh, the molarity triangle or the moles to atoms or molecules or moles to mass or grams can be used in number two and four. And you need to be a really critical reader of the problem to determine which actual steps you use in two and in four. So the rest of the time or the rest of the video cast now is example problems of using these steps and some of them go quite quickly, and the very last one takes a long time. So step or example problem uh, from sample exercise 14.15 if you're using uh, the 13th edition of the Brown Lemay textbook. If you're not, it's the same as many other places. Calculate the grams of calcium hydroxide needed to neutralize 25 milliliters of 0.1 molar HNO3. Step number one, write the balanced chemical equation. So calcium hydroxide reacts with nitric acid, HNO3, and take these cations and exchange them, just like we did with precipitation and acid-base reactions. Turns out this is an acid-base reaction. And we'll get calcium together with nitrate. Don't forget calcium is positive 2 and nitrate is minus 1, so you have to have a 2 down here. And we get some HOH. And we have to balance this chemical equation and so there's going to need to be a 2 in front of the HNO3, and there's going to be need to be a 2 right here in front of the HOH. So that's step number one, the balanced chemical equation, which can be sometimes the trickiest part of the problem. Step number two is to convert to moles, and so reread the problem and look to see which thing do you know the most about. And it turns out I know the most about HNO3, and I know a concentration, and I know a volume. Oh, I can go right to the molarity triangle now, and I can find moles by taking molarity times liters. So the molarity is 0.1 molar, or 0.1 moles per liter, and then I multiply that by the uh, liters right here, and remember the quickest way to go from milliliters to liters is 1, 2, 3 to the left, 0 0.025. 0 0.025 times uh, 0.1 is 0 0.0025 moles. Uh, the next step then is to use the mole to mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. So I'm given 0 0.0025 moles of HNO3, but what I want to know, my desired units are CaOH2. And so I put CaOH2 on the top. These are my desired units, or the thing that I want to know. 
and then the species that I already have, I put in a position where it's going to cancel. So I put HNO3 on the bottom. And HNO3 has a 2 in front of it, so I'd put a 2 down here. Notice how I put the units in first before I put the number in. So my desired units always go on the top, and the units that I already have, I put on the bottom. This will equal my moles of CaOH2. So I'll take my point 0, 0, 0,025, and I'll divide that by 2, and I end up with 0, 0, 0,00125 moles of CaOH2. The last step, step four, is convert to the asked for units. And now all I have to do is read the second word in the question, grams of CaOH2. And so I'm going to have to take my moles of CaOH2 right here, and I'll have to convert that to grams. So I'll put my moles in a position where it's going to cancel. My grams is my new set of units. And I have to add up calcium, which is 40, plus two oxygens and two hydrogens, and hydrogen remember is one, and that should add up to about 74 grams, 0 0.00125 times 74 ends up being 0 0.0926 grams of calcium hydroxide. So one of the techniques used in solution stoichiometry is called titration. Titration is simply a way of adding a substance that is opposite of another substance to neutralize or reach what's called an equivalence point. If you have a textbook with you, on page 152 of uh, the Brown LeMay uh, 13th edition, but if you don't have that textbook, that's okay. I'll show it to you. There's a little description of what titration is. Titration is used to determine the concentration of a particular solute in a solution. Chemists often carry out titrations, which involve combining a solution where the solute concentration is not known with a reagent solution of a known concentration called the standard solution. Just enough of the standard solution is added to completely react with the solute of the solution of the unknown concentration, and this point at which stoichiometrically equivalent quantities are brought together is called the equivalence point. Titrations can be conducted in neutralization, like acid-base reactions, precipitation reactions, those are ones where you make a solid, and in oxidation reduction reactions. And there's some pictures and steps on how that works here in this textbook. We're going to do a sample exercise 14.16 that's a titration problem. And in this case, we're going to look at the problem where we have NaOH of a particular concentration that we don't know. And we have H2SO4 being added to it and the H2SO4 is going to neutralize the NaOH, so then we can find out what is the concentration of this NaOH. So the first thing that we're given in this problem is that the concentration of the H2SO4 that's being used is 0.5 molar. And the other piece of information that we're given is to complete the titration to reach the neutral, neutralization point, or the equivalence point, is that it took 47.5 milliliters of this to reach it. We're also given the amount of NaOH, or the volume of NaOH that was originally titrated, and the volume, I believe, was 20 milliliters. So follow these along, just like the solution stoichiometry steps that we've been working on. Step number one, write the balanced chemical equation between H2SO4 and NaOH. Balance it. Then step number two, convert to moles. And they're giving us the information about H2SO4. And they're giving us a volume about H2SO4. 
and we multiply those together and we get 0 0.0229 moles of H2SO4 or you can write it in scientific notation like this. Step number three then is to use the mole to mole ratio from the balanced chemical equation. So we'll take the units that we have and we'll place those in a position where they're going to cancel. So I'll take H2SO4 and I'll put it down here on the bottom and that will have a 1 in front of it. And then I'll take my desired unit, which is my NaOH, and I'll put that at top. So there's a 2 in front of the NaOH, so it goes right up here. Put your units in first and show that they cancel. So when you multiply those together, you end up with 0 0.0457 moles. And then our goal in the titration is to determine the concentration of this unknown substance right here. And since we're given a volume, and we know the number of moles of NaOH. I'm given a volume, and I know the number of moles. I can find the concentration, or the molarity. So I'll take these moles, and I will divide it by the number of liters that they tell me in the question. So my moles are 0 0.0475, and I'll divide it by my 0 0.02 liters. Notice it was in milliliters up here, 1, 2, 3 to the left. Dividing those ends up with a 2.29 molar solution. The last problem that we're going to work is sample integrated exercise on page 155, if you have the 13th edition. If you don't, it's just a tough solution stoichiometry problem that involves a lot of steps. And I'm going to put the problem right up here so then we can look back at it. And it has a lot of different portions to it. And we'll refer back to it as we go through the problem. So first, let's read the problem. Uh, a sample of 70.5 milligrams of potassium phosphate is added to 15 milliliters of 0 0.05 molar silver nitrate, resulting in the formation of a precipitate. First of all, write the molecular equation for the reaction. That might be the toughest part of the whole problem. Part B, what is the limiting reagent? Hmm, a limiter. So we get to do this step, step number two and a half this time. And letter C, calculate the theoretical yield in grams of the precipitate that forms. And so we'll go through all the steps of stoichiometry right here and convert to the asked for units at the end as well in part C. So the first step in part A is to write the balanced chemical equation. And you need to remember back to chapter 2 to be able to write potassium phosphate. And you need to have memorized or remember that phosphate phosphate right here is uh, PO4 minus 3 and potassium in this group 1 so it has a plus 1 charge so I'll need 3 potassiums so it'll be K3PO4 and that is added to silver nitrate. Silver remember is always plus 1 on the periodic table you probably have that written on yours silver plus 1 right here and then nitrate is NO3 uh, minus 1. And since it's a uh, precipitation reaction or metathesis reaction, we're going to swap the cations here. And we end up with silver, which remember has a plus 1 charge, and phosphate over here, which remember has a minus 3 charge. And make sure that those equal 0. So I'll need a 3 right down here. And then the other species that comes together is potassium and nitrate. And potassium, remember, is positive 1, and nitrate is minus 1. So we'll end up with KNO3 over here on the right-hand side. Balancing this equation, we'll need a 3 here in front of the AGNO3 because there's 3 here. And we'll need a 3 in front of the KNO3 because there's 3 nitrates right here, and there's 3 potassiums here and here. Now. We also need to know which thing is the precipitate over here on the right-hand side. It does tell us that there's a solution of this. So this is aqueous. And it tells us that uh, a milligrams of potassium phosphate. Whoops, I'm sorry. Milligrams of potassium phosphate. So this is a solid. And then this is aqueous because it tells us a 
15 milliliters of 0.5 molar uh, silver nitrate. So it's solid potassium phosphate. And then over here on the right-hand side, we need to determine which one of these is going to precipitate or not. And so let me go to my trusty solubility rules right here. And I notice that all potassium salts are soluble. Also, all nitrate salts can be soluble. And so this is going to be aqueous for sure. And the silver phosphate isn't listed anywhere on here. But if I look down here, it says all phosphates are insoluble except for the 1A and ammonia. The 1A and ammonia are right up here. And that does not include silver. So this is going to be our solid or our precipitate. And this is our ultimate goal in step C to find out the number of grams of the precipitate that will form. So that's letter A. Now in letter B, it says, what is the limiting reactant in the reaction? So for this one, we're going to have to convert to moles. We did step number one, convert to moles for two different things. And we're told that we have 70.5 milligrams of the potassium phosphate. And skip a line, we're also told that we have 15 milliliters of 0 0.05 molar silver nitrate. Ooh, I know I can convert to moles right here by doing the molarity 0 0.050 mole per liter times the uh, liters, which is 0 0.015 liters. You remember three to the left, one, two, three, gets me the number of liters. And the 70.5 milligrams, I first have to get to be grams. And remember, in one gram, there are 1,000 milligrams. So three to the left, one, two, three, would give me the number of grams. And then going from grams to moles, I put grams of potassium phosphate in a position where it's going to cancel moles of potassium phosphate as my new set of units. And if I add up K3PO4 on the periodic table, I believe I end up with 212.3 grams for three potassiums, one phosphorus, and four oxygens. Taking this 70.5, um, dividing by 1,000, and then um, dividing by 212, I end up with 3.32 times 10 to the negative fourth moles. And then doing this math down here, remember this is for K3PO4. This math down here for the silver nitrate, multiplying those two together, I get 7.5 times 10 to the negative fourth moles of the AgNO3. So now I have two numbers of substances right here, and I need to go to step two and a half to determine which one of these two will limit the reaction. And I don't actually have to do the math. I just have to divide by the coefficient and say which would be the smallest. This one has a 1 in front of it, so I divide by 1. This one has a 3 in front of it, so I divide by 3. And if you're not actually sure, go ahead and take your calculator. And you can ignore the times 10 to the negative fourth right now and just take that number and divide it by 3 and then see if this number right here, 2.5, is smaller than this number or larger than this number. Well, it turns out it's a lot smaller, so that means this guy right here is my limiter. Whichever one is smaller after you divide it by the coefficient is the limiter. And once again, you don't actually have to do the math. You just have to decide which would be the smallest after you divide by the coefficient. So in letter B, we answer the question, which is the limiting reagent? K3PO4 limits. And then in letter C, it asks, what is the mass, or what are the grams, of the precipitate? And our precipitate is Ag3PO4. And so to calculate this, we would simply use the next two steps in our stoichiometry problem. So I have to use the moles of the limiter before I divide by the coefficient, so 7.5 times 10 to the negative fourth 
moles of AgNO3, write down all the units, put a multiply so I put a line, and now I'm in step three to do a mole to mole ratio. So put moles of the units that you have in a position where it's going to cancel, and then put moles of the desired species on the top. And the thing that I want to know, of course, is the uh, silver phosphate, so Ag3PO4, because I want to know the mass or grams of the precipitate. There's a 1 in front of the Ag3PO4. There's a 3 in front of the AgNO3. And when I, I could go ahead and do this intermediate calculation, but this is going to give me my moles of Ag3PO4. Uh, and I'm going to go right on to step number four and convert to the asked for units just by putting a multiply sign and another line here. Notice my moles canceled with my moles. And when I convert to the asked for units, I want to know the grams. And so I'm going to go from moles to grams. So put the units that you have in a position where it's going to cancel. And put grams of Ag3PO4 here on the top. Add up Ag3PO4 on the periodic table and you get 418.7 grams, three silvers, phosphorus, and four oxygens. And it's in one mole. And now I'll take 7.5 times 10 to the negative fourth, divide it by 3 times 418.7, and you should end up with 0 0.0, oops, I'm sorry, 0 0.10 grams of the silver phosphate. So in this video cast, we should have reviewed the steps to stoichiometry and you should have learned that in the steps now you can use the molarity triangle either to convert to the ask for units at the end or to convert to moles at the beginning. We also reviewed how to determine the limiting reagent in a particular problem and to do that remember you divide by the coefficient and determine which one is going to be the smallest. Good luck on your solution stoichiometry problems.